Hmm. I don't think I'm doing this right. This little blue beastie is the RV2 from Orange Pie. It's got an 8-core RISC-V with some AI tossed in, along with a handful of vectors. Memory comes in 2, 4, and 8 gigabyte configurations. It's got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5, M.2 UR, GPIO, a noise hole, and a power button. We like those. On the rear, we get three USB 3s, the Type 2, HDMI, dual gigabit, and an electron accumulator. But the fun doesn't stop there. On the back, there's EMMC, a serial display interface, an upside down SD slot, and another M.2, but this time with 100% more 2280. In the box, you get a Wi Fi antenna, but you don't get M.2 screws and some heat sinks to cover the 17 kilo feet by 17 turbo inch SOC. And you're going to need to put something on it because this critter runs hot. But why am I interested in an RV2? Two things. One, it's cheap. Two, Ubuntu released a developer image and they included a desktop. And there's no way I'm not going to have a go at that. So let me show you how to install Ubuntu on an SD card, EMMC, and NVMe. Then we're going to take a look at the desktop, test out the Wi-Fi and Ether noodles, run a couple of benchmarks, and maybe see if we can get it to do an AI. Sound good? Let's go. Adventure begins on the RV2 page at orangepie.org. Let's go ahead and tap that download tab, head over to the official image, and visit the Google Drive. From here, we can select server and desktop images. Let's give the Ubuntu desktop a save and extract the image. Now it's time to write the image to the SD card, pop it in the RV2, and apply the electrons. On the desktop, we're going to search for orange, open orange pie config, and give it the root password. Go into system security settings, install update bootloader, and we want to boot with SPI with the system on NVMe. Or if you have an EMMC module installed, you can select boot and run from EMMC. I'm going to be using an NVMe drive and it's going to be installed on the back or it ain't going to boot. Select the drive, agree to murderate the data bits, pick a file system and find something to do for the next couple of minutes. Now all we need to do is flash the bootloader and we're done. Power off and pop out the SD card. Let's power it back up. Now I can run DF and check that the NVMe drive is being used for the root partition. Neat. First thing I want to check is Wi-Fi and it's seeing nearby access points. Let's connect to one in the studio and yeah, no problems there. In the land of audio, HDMI audio output works because I jump every time I'm reminded my monitor has speakers. But no love for the 3.5mm audio input. And Bluetooth didn't have any issues pairing with my PS4 controller. Now let's open up Chrome and... Hey, there it goes. Let's see what's accelerated. All right, a couple of bits, but don't get too excited because this is what 720p60 playback on YouTube looks like. It's pushing the RV2 well over half tilt and dropping frames on the regular. Now you could hate watch this, but this is really a 480p machine. Fortunately, the default media player is properly accelerated and has zero issues with 1080p video or 2160p, aka 4K, played back at 60fps at 1080p. Right. Because 1080p is the maximum resolution of the RV2. Now it's time to take a peek at the disk speed, starting with that old SD card you found in the drawer. And I'm seeing about 78 read and 17 on the right over in Sequentialsville, and 8 and 2 for the random 4K. EMMC is a bit better with 207 read and 181 write for the sequential, and 20 and 31 for the 4K RNG. And the NVMe is doing a bit better with 654 read and 372 sequential write, along with 33 read and 56 write for the random 4K, making it the least worse. The Power VR graphics puts the RV2 into the Technically Functions category, delivering a GL Mark score of 406 and a I'm shocked this is working at all VK Mark score of 552. Geekbench 6 puts the RV2 well above the Pi 0 2W and a bit below the Pi 4, scoring 128 number digits on single threaded and 547 on multi. And finally, let's take a look at the Electron Vampirism. At idle, the RV2 is sipping around 1.5 watts without accessories, and we're seeing about 5 watt-ish under full load, and that's not bad. Let's sling some data bits over the wire using iPerf. We're getting about 878 megabits up. That's pretty good. 
Now, how about send and receive? Only 321 down and 703 up. That's not great, and I bet if we populate the second ether hole and run both at the same time, yeah, that's what I thought. It's really two ports, one gigabit. Why does that sound familiar? And I noticed something wonky with our sync. One core packed at 100% and a 200-ish megabit speed limit. And it's more the same with SFTP. So don't expect to do anything fast over SSH. At the time of filming, OpenWRT is not available for the RV2 because it doesn't exist. And I know you're going to be like, what about the one on the Google Drive? And I'm going to be like, remember your rules of acquisition, specifically rule 47. Never download OpenWRT from Google Drive. But you're going to do it anyway, so let's go ahead and hook up the UART and have a look. Yep, that's OpenWRT 24-ish. You can log into the web interface and it will give you an IP address but it's missing the bits for onboard Wi-Fi, so there you go. Saved you some time. I know somebody's gonna ask about Docker, so here we go. And I mean, there's really not much to pick from over at the old hub, and a chunk of that don't work. But it runs Hello World, so it's got that going for it. We have a whopping two tops of AI to play with, starting with Phi 3, which delivered 2.27 TPS reports, Mini CPM nearly doubled that with 4.2, and Quen2 taking the lead with 4.9. Then we have Llama 3. Yeah, that would give a dodgy dial up connection from the 90s a run for its money, but it does finish, so it gets a participation trophy that reads 1.15 TPS on the plaque. Eight cores. Two tops, one gigabit, EMMC, dual NVMe, and a side of Wi-Fi. This is a budget board with a RISC-V difficulty multiplier. You're going to be compiling a lot of software. Everything technically functions, and it's absolute overkill for its intended use in commercial electronics, industrial control, and IoT. It can even run an LLM, if you're patient. Now granted, it's a bit of a stinker on the desktop, but if you need a 1080p media player, this is a good starting point, and with two NVMe slots, you can get up to all kinds of headless nonsense. And if you don't, that's okay. The RV2 starts at 40 bucks. Yeah. Remember when single board computers were in the maybe I'll come up with something to do with it price range? Link in the description. I'll be using this one to keep track of Felix x86, the x8464 user space simulator for Risk v among other things. Stay tuned. And be sure to check out the full write-up on interfacing Linux. And if you have any questions, let me know down there in the comments. But most importantly, I want you to get out there and make something awesome.